<laughs> that needs to like show up on the camera. <laughs> oh, for sure. I maybe I should add that later. <laughs> I'm gonna go film him. <laughs> uh, anyway, all right. So that's the DNC Christmas album, and you know what that means. We're coming to close to the end of the show. It's time for the daily dose of stupid. Oh yeah. That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. And today's Daily Dose of Stupid is also going to be uh, Christmas-themed. Oh, a good one, yes. Of course, because it is our big Festivus special. My clients are never kind enough to do their Daily Dose of Stupid as, you know, Christmas-themed. I thought your clients were the Daily Dose of Stupid They're sometimes. They're like, my daily life is stupid. No, I'm kidding. I'd... I love my clients. Well, I mean, I I definitely could see that, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I've never been a lawyer, so like I don't I don't know what that's like. But I imagine that people come to you because they're in trouble and need help, and so yeah, usually the opposing party's being stupid. Ah, I see. See, that's how yeah. this works. This is why I'm not a lawyer. Mm-hmm. So somebody else has been stupid towards them, and you're trying to help them out. Okay, I get. That's it. I'm phrasing it. <laughs> All right. So today's daily dose of stupid. Christmas themed. Yes. What do you think about when you think about Christmas? Well, uh, toys. Yes. Presents. Yes. For little kids. Mm -hmm. Well, there are some parents that are taking issue with some of the toys being marketed to kids. Oh, which ones? Yeah, I know we have stories like this pretty much every year, but this one's interesting. It's a different spin on it. So there's an advocacy group that doesn't like big Nerf guns. They think that the Nerf guns are too big, too scary, and that they're marketing them as assault rifles. They, what? <laughs> now, this is a thing. What? So here's here's a quote from the story. This is from their letter directed at the company that, that makes Nerf guns. When your products themselves violate your most uh, most of your proclaimed corporate values, something is very wrong. How does promoting play with huge automatic weapons create joy, creativity, and connection around the world and across generations? and make the world a better place for children. How do these weapon products use your business as a force for good? Who would this child be shooting with his cache of assault weapons? Now, you've fired firearms quite a bit. I have too. Anyone that thinks that firing a gun cannot create joy has never fired a gun. <laughs> okay, I, I started shooting actual guns, like rifles, when I was six. I was in my first shooting contest at 13. Yeah, so, and I, I don't, I mean, I don't shoot Placed up in third, places. By the way. Hey, yeah. 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 Uh, fir first time I ever held a gun. Third place. Not bad. I mean, not bad. But I mean, we don't get the urge to shoot up places. The vast majority, like how many millions and millions of Nerf guns sell every single year? I don't know. It's got to be several millions. That's crazy. Right. But we're not having mass shootings left and right. You know, I, it makes me think of that movie, A Christmas Story. You know, and he wants that BB gun. The Red Rider BB gun. The yeah. Red Rider. And everybody keeps telling you'll shoot your eye out, kid. Yeah. Okay. Since when have we gone from that concern to he's got to shoot everybody? Yeah, no, it's it's absurd. We have really made a weird turn. And here's another thing, too. When you talk about it doesn't foster creativity, I have to wholeheartedly disagree. It takes a lot of creativity to think up new ways to destroy things. Like, true. It's, it's it a process. Takes creativity to figure out how exactly do I sneak up on my brother this right. time without him catching me enough to hit him. Right. Yeah. And and that's why Nerf also makes swords. Yes. Uh, but anyway, here's the thing. They do make these guns to look menacing. They also make regular guns to look menacing because people like having the menacing looking gun and the threat factor is also part of the intimidation in real life too. Because if you were to see somebody with a handgun, you would obviously be threatened, but not as threatened if you see somebody holding an AR-15. Entirely And that's accurate. a good thing. That's one of the reasons people buy those guns is because they do look more menacing. <laughs> but are far less difficult to use. <laughs> that too. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's part of it as well. But here's the thing, Laura, and, you know, roll with me on this. What's the purpose of play? Uh, to create imagination, to occupy children so they don't bother their parents. Well, that's also, I would say that that's part of it. But you would agree that most of what is traditionally considered play is, and this is true in animal species as well as human beings, to sort of simulate real life scenarios, real life situations. Yeah. And part of the reason that play is so important for children 
is because they're developing skills, they're developing a worldview. With boys, one of the things that they like to do is play as combatants. They yes. like to play fight. They like to use, you know, fake weapons or whatever. This is true of me and my brother. It's true of virtually every boy. Girls to a degree too, but primarily boys. If it's true of girls, it's just self-defense because they have brothers. Well, that's That a, was me. I was about to say, you know that. You have two brothers. Yeah. So. <laughs> but why is that important for a young boy? That's because, and you know, when they grow up, they become the defender. They are the protector. Right. And so... What they're doing is they're focusing on the violence itself and the aggression itself and not the purpose of what that aggression is supposed to do. Yeah. Because having a man that is completely unaggressive, that would stay out of a fight no matter what, that's not a man that's going to be capable of defending people, whether it's you, your children, whatever. And what drives me up a wall is that the same kind of women that would complain about this and talk about how horrible it is that we're teaching young boys to be violent and we should never encourage even simulated violence are the same ones that will complain that there's no manly men out there anymore. Yeah, I mean, they're the ones that's creating that. Right. These are, the, playing like this, it is creating a fake scenario in a safe environment so that boys can learn if you're going to use violence, whether you're you know, pretending to shoot somebody, you want to be the good guy. You want to be the one that is taking out your aggression and channeling it for the right reasons. And that's what these people don't seem to understand. Yeah, okay. So if you're a parent that's afraid of your child playing with a Nerf gun, that tells me one of two things. Either one, there's not a male figure in that home. That's what that tells me. Or number two, you pass down the mass murder gene. I don't know. That's what I got. <laughs> well. Um, I do think though that legitimately there are some, some issues here that people we're, we're trying so hard to make little boys into little girls. And we've tried that for a couple decades now, and it has not yielded good results. No, women are horrible. Why would you want more of them? <laughs> well, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I will. You know, I've noticed that. And there's a, a, a little bit of wisdom that I've taken that I think is really good. There's a great scene and I can't remember what show it's from. But it's a, a boy talking to his father, and this is a guy who just recently got married, and he's like, Dad, I got to tell you, I thought that it would be better once I got married, but I just do not understand women, uh, understand women at all. He's like, son, you're going about this the wrong way. You're not supposed to understand women. Women understand women, and they hate one another. <laughs> so, we barely understand ourselves, just being honest here. Right, but the point is, like, you know, maybe we should understand a little less, and that'll help us get along with women. <laughs> you just need to understand one woman, and then you're good. <laughs> yeah, well, good, good luck with that, everybody out there that's trying. Yeah, um, I'm not sure I understand my here, own self. Here's another quote, and, and this is another one that kind of caught my eye. As we watch holiday toy commercials, we see the Nerf Ultra One. This is the gun that they're advertising that they're mm -hmm. talking about. And another extreme Nerf machine guns for children that are reminded of mass shootings that have devastated American children and families for decades now. All right, so a couple points here. First of all, they're saying these Nerf machine guns for kids are the ones that are reminding these kids and traumatizing them because they're the kinds that are used in mass shootings. And yet the sales are up, so that's cool. Well, I don't know if the cells are up or not, but here's the thing. When was the last time a machine gun was used in a mass shooting? I can't think of any. You know why? Because there aren't any. There has never been on American soil ever a machine gun or an automatic weapon used in a mass shooting. Not no. once. And most people don't have machine guns anyway. No. I mean, it, you have to be basically a millionaire to even be legally allowed to own a machine gun. Yeah. Those things expensive. And so that's the thing that's funny. Now, there are machine gun Nerf guns. Like, there are Nerf guns that you hold down the trigger and it just sprays some bullets. Like, I, I've used those before. Yeah. So well, I can attest to those existing. But as far as, like, an actual machine gun, they're saying that these are the same kind of machine guns that are using mass shootings. No, there's never been a mass shooting perpetrated with a machine gun. Not once. It's basically, I, I think the left views anything that has a higher capacity than six bullets as a machine gun. I think That's it was basically what they think. Bloomberg recommended five, which is hilarious. It's like, well, you couldn't even hold a traditional revolver. Then. <laughs> it's not even a thing. Like, no. There aren't uh -uh. guns with less than five bullets. That's, I mean, unless you're carrying a Derringer. <laughs> you really, if you're doing that, that's like, you know, we're doing that as a, you know, concealed carry kind of thing. But no, 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 you better be a really good shot if you could do it with less than five bullets. Yeah. I mean, that's another thing too. I think it's because they've only seen like action movies. Like, first of all, 
we're not all Jason Bourne, and even Jason Bourne isn't Jason Bourne. Like the stuff that goes on in those movies are not real. Yeah, if you if you're um, gonna get me to like hit my target within five shots, you got to take me off like mansplain to me. It's <laughs> about the only way it's gonna work. Uh, I'll have to remember that. Yeah. But here's another <laughs> thing too that they talk about mass shootings that have traumatized their kids for decades. Now, granted, I'm not saying mass shootings aren't a real problem, but they're actually far less common than they used to be back when we had less Nerf guns and less real guns yeah, true. out in circulation. In fact, schools specifically are far less common than they used to be. Do you know that a school in the 90s was four times more likely to experience a mass shooting than they were today? No, I had not heard that. And here's another one you probably haven't heard. Did you realize that in Wisconsin, within the span of 24 hours, they had two different school shootings? No, On when December was that? 3rd. You know why you didn't hear about it? Why? Because the two people that were doing the shooting were school resource officers. Taking but out a threat. Well, that makes sense. And the only people that were injured, uh, in one case, a principal was injured because he got stabbed. The kid had a knife. And in the other case, the school resource officer was there and happened to stop him before he could hurt anybody. Huh. And of so, course, you would never hear that because that's not the exactly. narrative. Exactly. That's, that's not convenient to the left's anti-gun narrative. And people, a mass shooting not happening is not nearly as big a news story as it happening. Mm-hmm. And so because of that, and I understand why, because, of course, people being dead makes it a bigger story than people being not dead. Yes, we do like it when people are not dead. But the point is, I would put down money right now. Both of those school resource officers probably had Nerf guns or something akin to it when they were kids. (laughs) Because they learned then you use weapons and you use aggression in a positive way to defend other people. And that carried forward to a career where they save lives. Yeah, I agree with that. I can't think of a little boy out there that didn't have a toy gun of some kind. Well, I think that that's uh, that's just a great testament to how, if used properly, even simulated violence in play is actually a positive thing. So, Just in case you were wondering, yes, I am a straight white Christian male and a small government constitutionalist which means I have no chance of getting any help from the government and wouldn't accept their help even if they offered. Which means I'm going to need you to like and subscribe because my gun collection is not going to pay for itself.